must learn to master how to control and be in charge of yourself. To confront, to conquer, to configure yourself is the altar that births the new level, that births the new you, that births the next level until you have learned to conquer yourself, you can't get into the next level. Because the new you must attract, the new you must magnetize, the new you must uh, uh, bring to bear the next level, the next contact, the next door. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. Therefore, we do not lose heart even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Verse 17, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and internal weight of glory. 18, while we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, and the things which are not seen are eternal. Based on this, I welcome you this day to stepping up. My name is still Sebastian Nwaneri, and we are looking at cultivating your spiritual mind, part three. Cultivating your spiritual mind, part three. Yes, 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 yes. I, I want to appreciate everybody all over the globe for your questions, your contribution your email, and the WhatsApp has been a serious discourse. Oh, Jesus Christ, the discussion on that platform, the feedback on that platform, your questions have been awesome. In fact, I can say that we've been having stepping up maybe three, three, four, five times in a week because if you are not on that team, you are not on that WhatsApp, the number will be shown before the end of the program. You are missing because... God inspires me to do some teaching and some things on that platform. To God alone be all the glory. Yes, we are hoping to see you being part of it. And for you to be part of it, you are benefiting and enhancing the word, the kingdom of God in your life. Yes, we, 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 we landed off the last episode where we're talking about how tongues are going to be tamed. What do you do to tame your tongue? What do we do? We said that tongues cannot be tamed physically. Man can't handle it. Man can't control it. We are not skillful enough. We are not intelligent enough because, listen, it is dynamic. And I said it is only through spiritual exercise that your tongue is controlled, your tongue is, uh, is tamed, your tongue is managed. Because until you get to that understanding, the tongue can't be managed. So you, you, you need to understand your self-effort, your self-skill, your self-sense, your self-what, capacity and intelligence can't. And we said, okay, how do we handle it? It is handled supernaturally. It is handled spiritually by spiritually engaging on the activities though that will help us. One of it is to submit your tongue to the Lord Almighty. The two, number two is to ask God to teach you Teach you how to handle it. Number three is ask angelic intervention to put the coal of fire on your tongue for you to know how to handle it. Put the coal of fire on your tongue. Number four, how to control the tongue. Number four is what? To put the word of God on your lips. Let the word of God take over your lips. Let the word of God, seriously, put the word of God on your lips. Jeremiah 1, 9. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my tongue or my mouth. And the Lord said to me, behold, I have put my word in your mouth. I have put my word in your mouth. When the word of God is on your lips, you go ahead. You go ahead. You deliberately start declaring the word of God. Because remember, James chapter 3 verse 2. James chapter 3 verse 2. The more you declare the word of God, what happens? The more you are controlling and breathing your members. He said we we will stumble in a lot of things. He said, any man that does not stumble in word, to him is a perfect man, being able to breathe through his tongue and control every part of his body. So you depend absolutely, continuously on what? On the word of God on your lips. Number five. 
17, verse 171. Psalm 119, verse 171. My lips shall alter praise, for you teach me your status. My tongue shall speak of your word. My lips shall alter praise. When you start praising God with that lips, when I mean a <laughs> praise connecting with your soul, the, the, the psalmist puts it this way, singing with understanding. You are singing with understanding. You are thanking God with understanding. When you thank God, when you praise God, when you, when you worship God, this threefold cord cannot be easily be broken. I'm not talking about lips praises. I'm not talking about lips thanksgiving. When your spirit is involved, connecting it with your mind and coming out of your mouth is awesome, awesome, awesome. Pastor, how do I connect? Look, how do I connect my mind in praises, in worship, and what? And, and thanking God. When you, when you think from the depth of your mind before you thank God. When you think from the depth of your mind before you praise God. Look, my counsel is that if you want to know more, get my book, The Effect of Praise. Because there's a difference between singing from your soul and singing from your mouth. You need to sing from your mind. There are different between singing from your mind and singing from your spirit. When you connect them together, transformation is in place. I think number six way to tame your tongue, to tame your tongue is meditate on the word of God regularly. Meditate on the word of God. Think through, think through, think through, think through, think through. Think, think about the word of God. Meditate on the word of God. Meditate on the word of God. Meditation expands your, uh, your, your observation senses. Meditation expands your uh, uh, observation senses. Meditation expands your mind. Meditation activates your what? Your intuitive faculty. Your meditation wakes up your intuitive faculty. Meditation strengthens you from within. Let me stop there because I'm not teaching meditation. Meditation strengthens you from within. Meditation strengthens you from within. Meditation, uh, meditate on the word of God always. Psalm 19, verse 14. Psalm 19, verse 14. He said, let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, which is my mind, be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, still on meditation. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous and then you will have what? Good success. Meditation. The act and the power of meditation. The act and the power of meditation. Number one, now number six, exercise your mind daily. Exercise your mind daily. That is one of the ways. Listen, the bodily exercise and the spiritual exercise, they are of the same knowledge. The way you exercise your body to be physically fit, to physically be agile, and do things that you couldn't do before, have enough strength to do some physical chores, some physical things, that is the way when you meditate, uh, when you do mental exercise, it sharpens your mind. It sharpens your mind. When you also do spiritual exercise, it meditation is spiritual exercise. Meditation is both spiritual exercise and mental exercise. And when we talk about uh, 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 mental exercise or mind exercise, it sharpens, it sharpens your mind. Why, pastor? Because the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the man speaks. Out of the abundance of the heart, the man. So when your mind or your heart is, is what? Is exercised, ready on 27-7, 24-7 activity, you do what? You see resourcefulness. Pastor, what kind of exercise? People don't know that studying is exercise. Reading is mental exercise. Speaking is mental exercise. Thinking is mental exercise. Reasoning is mental exercise. You do it often. You do it as often as possible. Meditation is mental exercise. Imagination is mental exercise. When you imagine things, 
When you imagine, the imagination is mental exercise. It keeps you healthy. It keeps you warm. It keeps you wholesome. It keeps you well. Your mind is well. Your mind is health. Your mind is healthy. When you what? Engage in this tool. You read. You study. You meditate. You speak. You imagine. I'm talking about positive imagination, not negative. Because with or without your cooperation, permission, and assistance, uh, many people are, med- uh, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are meditating already. Because negative meditation takes in, takes place. Pastor, what do you mean by negative meditation? The moment, God forbid, it will not happen, they give you a sack letter. Without your conscious mind being involved, your unconscious mind starts going into what? In the, into meditation, going to diverse places. Your memory kicks into activity. For you losing your job, he start telling you about school fees. Are you paying school fees? Then no. If you are, if you are, if you have not built your own property, start telling you that you can't pay rent. So you need to deliberately. Please let me tell you, these are works and responsibility and labor that you can't delegate. That's why I tell you, this kingdom is not for lazy people. Christianity is a way of life. It's not touch and go. It's a way of life. It's a content of what? Behavioral pattern that we must engage. You must engage. Then the last one, you learn how to speak. You learn how to talk. You learn how to communicate. You learn how to speak. You learn how to talk. Speak. You learn how to talk. You learn how to communicate. Don't, don't, don't use your tongue as a dagger. When we get into the scripture, that when, when we start looking at, uh, what's it called now, uh, um, the tool of crucifixion, you will see it. Because one of the crucifixion tools is what? Slander. Slander. One of the crucifixion tools is slander. One of the crucifixion is betrayal, lies, accusation, persecution. Those are things that what? That you not knowing how to talk. Because 1 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11, you see, when I was a child, I spoke as a child, I taught as a child, I understood as a child. When I became a man, I left childishness. The Lord Almighty will grant us strength and capacity in the name of Jesus Christ. I said, the Lord Almighty will grant us strength and capacity in the name of Jesus Christ. So let's quickly look into the, the right usage of the tongue. Right usage of the tongue. Right usage of the tongue. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruits. I pray that heaven grant us intelligence now in the name of Jesus Christ. Your understanding is enlightened. Bakuto lea sketala, ikentu brema la koshe, jentu skoto brea la doske, e vemuru mara kwande bolo krada sende kababa. The power of God comes upon you now in the name of Jesus Christ. For you to understand, for you to assimilate, for you to appreciate in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. The power of what? Life. And death is where in the tongue. Meaning the tongue is a weapon. It's a strong weapon. Either an offensive weapon or a a defensive weapon. Or even a destructive weapon. Depending on what you are looking at. Right usage. Right usage. I'm going to run through. I'm going to run through. I'm going to run through. I'm going to run through about 14 things we have here. I'm going to run it through for us to understand. Get your Bible and paper. Number one, number one right usage of the tongue is to clear and prepare the soil of your mind. To clear and prepare the soil of your mind. Number one, to prepare and clear the soil of your mind. Meaning weeds. <laughs> weeds are removed from your mind with your tongue. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 1. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 1. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 1 uh, in King James says... Uh, 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 um, the preparation of the heart, which is the same thing as the mind, belong to the man. The answer of the prayer of the mouth belong to God. The preparation of the tongue belong to the man. That the answer of the prayer of the tongue uh, 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 belongs to who? Belongs to God Almighty. And in Amplified Version, look at what Proverbs 16.1 says. Proverbs 16.1. It says, the plan of the mind and the orderly thinking belong to man. But from the Lord comes 
the wise answer of the tongue. From the Lord comes the wise answer of the tongue. Number two, number two, right usage of the tongue. To plant and build seeds in your mind. To plant and build seeds in your mind. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. Number three, to water the seed planted in your mind. To water the seed planted in your mind. First Corinthians also, chapter 3, verse 6b. Pastor, what I say? First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6 says, I planted Apollos watered, God brought increase. That I've said it that when you hear something for the first time, it's planting. When they are teaching you something new, it's the planting. When you hear it again, it's the watering. When you hear it again, it's the watering. And let me tell you something. The more you hear it, the more the thing is watered in the soil of your life, which is your mind, which is your soul. It begins to grow because when it starts growing, first the head, second the blade, and the, and the leaf, it starts pulling its equivalent into himself. He start pulling his equivalent into himself. And we are a lot of us Christians, we miss it, is the moment you hear something for the first time or the second time, when you are listening to it again, ah, no, no, ah, I've had it, I've had him. Oh, what is he going to say? I've had him. <laughs> it's so shocking. Let me tell you this. They don't know that the second time, the third time, the fourth time, the fifth time, you are hearing a particular teaching, or repeating a, 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 a particular CD or tape, it is when it is watered. There are some teachings I have heard or listened to more than 40 times, more than 60. One particular teaching. One hour, one hour, 20 minutes, some 55 minutes, you play it on auto, because the more you play it, the more you will discover that there are some things you are hearing you have not heard before. Again, when you are going through some problems, some specific, specific problems, peculiar problem, and you play some teachings, some DVDs, some, some CDs you have, the more you are listening to them, especially when they are the problem-related teaching, the things you will hear will shock you beyond your bones. You might have listened to that CD more than 30 times. More than 30 times. A wise man said that the human mind is designed to absorb, attract, and accept information as when needed. The human mind is designed by God Almighty to absorb, attract, and accept information as when needed. The best time to learn is when you are going through problem. The best time to read is when you are going through problem. The best time to go for training and teaching is when you are going through problem. The best time to go for counseling, I mean relevant counseling, Relevant books is when you are going through problem because that is when you are not only kashandala baba, you are not only listening, you are being instructed, you are being guided to come out of it. I think in the last episode, somebody was like, Pastor Carl, can you teach me how to diligently guide my mind? That's what I'm telling you. You will be so shocked at the reading. You will be so shocked. I was at a program many, many years ago and they invited a, 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 a popular man of God, uh, Dr. Mines Muro. The moment, the, the moment they brought him on stage after the introduction and he told us what he wants to talk about, the man beside me was like, ah, I've listened to it separately. I don't like being around such people. I just blocked my ear from him. I, I was focused. He was there sleeping. <laughs> but do you know the beauty of that teaching? He taught... He taught 40% to 45% of the old things we have had. He was building on the things that he has been teaching. The remaining, the remaining uh, 55% was something new. So it was towards the tail end that my brother man woke up from his sleep. <laughs> I was trying to grab and try to write. I was peeping into my note to find out what I have written. Listen, listen, listen. Even if he repeats the same thing, the Bible says the word of God is new every morning. Holy Spirit, let's move. Let's move. I've spent so much time on, on, on this issue of watering because this is where Christians will miss it. The, listen, listen, and I've said it either in part one or part two of this series, the cultivating your spiritual mind, part three. In this series, I've said it, that listen, listen, that you'll be shocked. You'll be shocked at the things 
that you hear. When you hear, place it on auto repeat. And when you hear something once, two, three, ten times, you will be shocked at the depth of revelation that will happen inside of you. The depth of exposure, the depth of understanding that will come. It will be shocking to you. And the Lord Almighty will glorify himself in the name of Jesus. Number four, the right usage of the tongue. Number four, to constantly weed the soil or the soul or the mind from weeds. You weed it the way farmers go to uproot on one tail plant. Weeds are on one tail plant. Weeds are on one tail plant. Weeds are plants that were not planted or cultivated by the farmer. That just found himself growing. The same thing, you leave your mind value. Your mind gathers weeds. Your mind gathers tongues. Your mind gathers things growing. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 20 to 23. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 20 to 23. You use your tongue to uproot things, plant, and trees God has not planted. Matthew chapter 15, verse 13. Matthew 15, 13. Number 6. You use your tongue to build and give life. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 2. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21 B. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21 B. Number 7. You... You use your, your tongue and it leads to death and disconnection of things. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21a. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21a. Number nine, number eight. Number eight. You use your tongue to pull down, to pull down and throw down what? To pull down and throw down things. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 10. 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 Things that are thrown down, things that are pulled down, are things that are not wanted. Many of us don't know. We don't know that, that this statement, I'll make this statement, because it is through your mouth, your tongue, that you used to learn things. It is through your mouth and tongue that you, need, you used to unlearn things. And it's also through your tongue and your mouth that you used to relearn things. That's point nine. To learn, relearn, and unlearn. Those things are the functionality of both your mind and your tongue and your mouth. Because, because people think it's that, <laughs> it's that easy. The most interesting part is to learn. And the most difficult part out of this thing is to unlearn. To uh, unlearn things you learned that is wrong is, is, is warfare. It's warfare. It's skillful. You have to deliberately, intentionally engage in unlearning things that are not productive, things that are not relevant, things that are not useful, things that are not impactful, things that are not what? Are not productive in your life. To unlearn them is war. Unlearn them is war. Relearning is not as difficult as unlearning. Relearning. Relearning has its own challenge. That you are going to stretch, you're going to fight, is going to stretch and pull you both ways for you to do what? For you to be perfected. So, so, so when we talk about pulling down strongholds, pulling down strongholds, <laughs> that's what, <laughs> that's what um, 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 Second Corinthians, I think I'm right, Second Corinthians um, chapter 10, verses uh, 3, 4, 5, is saying, uh, uh, um, though we walk in the flesh, we don't walk after the flesh. For the weapon of our warfare, they are mighty through God in pulling down strongholds. Strongholds. Number one, uh, uh, argument. Another uh, 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 translation calls it what? Imagination. Wrong image formation inside of you, you need to pull down. Wrong mindset, you pull down. Wrong images, you pull down. Wrong belief system, you pull down. 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 So we need to come into that understanding. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 10. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 10. He said, to enter into your future and into God's promises, uh, you use your tongue. You use your tongue to enter into your future. Yes, yes, yes. Because whatever you are saying repeatedly enters your mind. Whatever you say repeatedly enters your mind. That is how you plant the seed of the word into your mind. Whatever you place on auto repeat, whatever you say repeatedly, continuously enters your mind. Please let me say this. Let me say this. Because we are talking about cultivation of your mind. A lot of people don't know that when you complain and murmur, you are sowing seed into your mind. I'm going to come back after the break to continue from here. 
Don't change that dial. I will be back. God bless you. Heavens International Center. I believe that what you see and hear here will rouse your faith and your life will never remain the same. Challenge God you seeing what you see here as a point of contact to your miracle. It is only those who have been sick who will know the value of being healed, particularly when the sickness is the one they say cannot be cured. Doesn't matter what the doctor said, you will be healed. But it is better to be healthy, not to be sick at all. Better still to be the one healing the sick. In Mark 16, from verse 17 to 18, Mark 16, 17 to 18, Jesus said, These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they went down to say they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And I pray for every one of you. From today onward, not only will you be healthy, when you lay hands on the sick, they will recover. Yes, welcome back to Stepping Up. My name is still Sebastian. In one area, we are looking at cultivating your spiritual mind, part three. Cultivating your spiritual mind, part three. If you are just joining us, uh, you are welcome. And uh, we are looking at cultivating your spiritual mind, part three. And we have announced uh, about you getting these materials and letting this material be a blessing to you. And I, I also mentioned of my book, The Effect of Praise. The Effect of Praise to know how to differentiate how to worship differently the, the different praises within your spirit, praising from your spirit and praising from where? From your flesh or your soul. There are different impact. The difference is there in the book. And as you read it, and the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. In fact, it's good to recommend the effect of praise for your choir because you understand things. Praises is not for entertainment. It is for entrainment. A lot of people think praise in church, praise and worship in church is for entertainment. It is not for entertainment, it is for entrainment. It is for entrainment. Let me stop there so you get the material. Get this, building your spiritual mind. This is the last series uh, we just completed. We are starting a new one. So we have, we have four packs of different series like this together, engaging your spiritual mind, the productive uh, uh, power of your spiritual mind, um, 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 building your spiritual mind, and this cultivating your spiritual mind. I believe God Almighty, you get this pack, settle down, and listen to them. Ask questions, and the Lord Almighty shall turn around your totality in the name of Jesus Christ. Get the money you, get the effect, uh, 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 maximizing your life, and every other books uh, that we have, and the material. Heaven will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Look. Afford yourself of that blessing. Every month, buy books. At least for those of you that, uh, that, that were at the youth convention, Pastor Matthew said something on the Thursday afternoon teaching, how he reads four books a week. How he reads four books. It is statistically proven for you to be a successful manager, a, su a successful CEO, sorry, a successful CEO. You must write, you must read minimum four, uh, one book a week and retain about 95% of, of, of the content of the material. He said he reads four books a week, retaining about 80 to 85% of the content. Wow. 
You can imagine in a month he have lead, he have read 16 books, <laughs> and you in a month uh, uh, you are still struggling to read four at least to try it. And those of you that didn't, have not read anything, those of you that don't have any any, the Lord Almighty will strengthen you in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, library is one of the best legacy and gift you give to your children. Library, library. If you want to appreciate that for free, read the richest man in Babylon. The richest man in Babylon was written in 1928. I'm not giving them advert. But for you to understand that the power of information, the power of building library. Yes, I stopped at, uh, at point nine. At point nine, when I was talking about you enter into your future and into the reality of the scriptural promises by placing the word of God on your lips. And I was trying to say that a lot of people don't know that murmuring and complaining, murmuring and complaining is planting negative seed in your life. Planting negative seed in the soil of your heart. You don't know. Remember, I said, Luke chapter 8, verse 11, the word, uh, the seed is the word of God. Mark chapter 4, verse 14. Mark chapter 4, verse 14. The seed is the word. So when you speak words, you are sowing. You are complaining, you are sowing. The first time you complain, you have sown the seed. The, the subsequent time you are grumbling, you are murmuring, you are watering it. You are, and everything you sow, you will reap. Everything you sow, you will reap. Everything you sow. Everything you sow. I'm just showing you how your, tongue, how your, how your words bear your tongue. It's a seed you have planted in the soil of your heart. A lot of people don't know. And it is those complain that form the hardness of your heart. It's just complain. Those complain. I believe heaven that as you listen to this, you will change in the name of Jesus Christ. That your tongue controls your body and other parts of your member. James chapter 3 verse 2. James chapter 3 verse 2. Romans chapter 6 verse 16. Your tongue regulates your soul, especially your mind. Your tongue regulates your soul, especially your mind. Your tongue regulates your soul, especially your mind. Second Corinthians chapter 3 verses 2 and 3. <laughs> your tongue is a ready writer's pen that writes your destiny. James, um, Psalm chapter 45, verse 1. Psalm chapter 45, verse 1. Your tongue defines and determines your performance in the marketplace. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 14. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 14. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 2. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 2. God Almighty determine uh, God Almighty and the devil only does what you say. God Almighty and the devil only does or respond to what you say. Numbers chapter 14, verse 28. Let me stop here and let me take, take, take the, 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 the messages. Just keep your messages coming. And as you do, the Lord Almighty will bless you in Jesus' name. Uh, there's a long message here written by somebody. Say, good morning, sir. I appreciate what you are doing. The Lord Almighty bless you. The teaching has been impactful and glorious. My name is Tochi. I need your prayers, please. I want, to be a submiss I want to be submissive to my husband, as the scripture says, but I react to everything he says. But it was not like this before. I want to always respect and, re uh, 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 and reference him. Please, I need help. I find it difficult to study the Bible. In fact, I find it difficult in understanding even when I, I force myself to study. However, my prayer life is zero. Nothing to write home about. I find it difficult to pray, if, uh, to pray even pray well, especially in the night, and I get angry easily. I have tried everything and I can't do anything. Find, find um, um, the Lord Almighty will grant you grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, the first thing that is going through my mind, did you genuinely accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior? Or have you backslided from me? Because you have to come back to that salvation because, uh, because everything you are saying is both your spiritual and every aspect. Now, you're finding it difficult to submit to your husband 
and you said it was not so before, is, is um, something happened along the line. Your husband did something painful to you, which you deliberately, intentionally refused to forgive her. You, that lack, that unforgiveness has formed a stony heart. Your heart is hardened against him. That's why you can't submit to him. He has done something bad. He has made mistake. Maybe he has pleaded and asked for your forgiveness and you, for, and you refuse to forgive him. And you refuse to forgive him. And that's why you are playing out like this. That's why you are playing out like this. And you react. That bitterness, that hurt is still inside of you. Pastor, what are you saying? Hurt, hurting people hurt others. Hurting people hurt others. You have to make up your mind to be healed. You have to make up your mind. Pastor, how am I going to be healed? Forgive him. Forgive him and remove that root of bitterness from you. Pastor, how? Forgive him. Pray for him from your heart. Pray for him. Stop looking at his mistakes and shortcomings. You document mistakes. You document shortcomings. You document what? Uh, 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 errors. Uh, play, Pastor, uh, play, please, I need help. I find it difficult studying my Bible. Uh, when, when I even force myself to, I don't understand. Listen, lack of understanding is lack of focus. Your, your mind is not there. There are a lot of things in your mind. There are a lot of things. Purge your mind. There's so much noise in your mind. Purge your mind. Remove things. When you force yourself, the hunger is not there. The hunger is not there. Purge, purge yourself. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 13 and 14. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 13. He said, my son, eat honey. It is good for you. Eat, uh, uh, and, and, and so is the honeycomb. He said, let, let the knowledge of wisdom a revelation be good to be, be what be sweet to thy soul, be sweet to thy soul. So, until knowledge, wisdom, and understanding are sweet to your soul, your mind will not be focused to it. That's why the fact that you force yourself to go into it, it doesn't still what produce. Then you said your prayer life is zero you, be, because you can't pray until you understand the importance of prayer, until you get the teaching of prayer. You, you see, because all these things are interrelated. The bitterness from your, 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 your husband, lack of submission due to bitterness, you bring it up to you because that, that is attitude and bitterness is, is disturbing your heart, is a stone in your heart, anything you want to see. Because reading, uh, understanding is when your mind is plain. There's nothing. It's just like trying to pour seed in a stony ground. It can't germinate. It can't enter. The seed cannot even enter. Because the seed is the word of God. It is when it enters and starts growing, you will have understanding. So, but you are bitter. The bitterness is like a seed. Um, it's like a stone, sorry, that covers the word of God. It's a seed that wants to come in. That's why you don't understand. That's why I'm telling you, let go and let God come in. Let go and let God come in. Free your mind. Free your mind. I'm, I'm not a prophet of doom, please. Forgive me. But with all this thing happening, if you check, your blood pressure is high. Your blood pressure is high. It, 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 it's an inner transaction that is painful. I pray that the Lord Almighty give you grace to forgive your husband and give you grace to be submissive to him for you to remove every bitterness, the root of bitterness, anger, frustration inside of you and for you to start understanding the scriptures and for you to have the understanding and what? Light for you to what? Take it to the place of, of, of prayer. The Lord Almighty will bless you greatly in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, Pastor, I thank you for the wonderful job you are doing. My expectation is that God should heal my husband and restore him back to his job. Mrs. Ola, the Lord Almighty will bless you and bring back. In some cases, God might not take your husband back to that job. God will bring a better job. I'm sure because the job was lucrative. That's why you are praying that God should take him back to that job. They say, when we get into death and burial, we are still talking about crucifixion. When you talk about death and burial, death, he has lost the job. The job is gone. Believing God for a better one. Because you don't know what God wants to do. You, pa Pastor, I don't want God to do anything. It's because, listen, that's what um, Luke chapter 5, verses 37 to 39. Luke 5, 37 to 39. That's what he's saying. He said, God cannot pour new wine in an old wine skin. 
He said, if he does, that both the new wine and the old wine skin will be ruined. So, but God will pour new wine in a new wine skin so that they can be preserved. And he says something in verse 39, that no man after drinking the old desires the new. Desires the new. So that's what is happening to you. That's why you are specifically requesting for the old. Because the old you have tested, you don't want, you don't want to really experience what the new have. You believe and think that the new is not even better than the old. So my prayer and belief for you is that God will heal your husband, whether it's financial illness, whether it's financial healing, um, employment healing, God will heal your husband and restore, uh, and restore him to a better position to the glory of God and to the shame of the devil. I pray that God Almighty will heal this, this my viewer that asks this, Ogabuba from Port Harcourt, my expectation for the rest of the year is to, to, to God to cure me from my sickness in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, receive healing now in the name of Jesus Christ. You are healed, you are whole, you are healthy to the glory of God. You are healed, you are whole, you are healthy to the glory of God. You are healed, you are whole, you are healthy to the glory of God. You are healed, you are whole, you are healthy to the glory of God. You are healed, you are whole. You are held to the glory of God. That Lord Almighty brings everything into bear according to the will. Yes, pastor, I am appreciating what you are saying and I'm appreciating what you are teaching. How do I really manage this tongue? Pastor, there are things, there are things that one say after you regret. How do I handle it? <laughs> after you have said some things, damaging things about people and you regret it, if the people are at close range, you go and meet them to apologize. You apologize, you apologize, and tell them to forgive you. Ask them of genuine, sincere forgiveness. And when that is done, and you are repeating it every time, you discover that from inside, before you talk, before you talk, you will think. Because this issue of, um, of, of deadly tongue or deadly usage of tongue is because people don't think before they talk. They just talk. They just talk, especially bosses. They believe that they are above you. Whatever they say, you, you, you have no, you can't stand or you refute them. You have, no, you, you, you have no control. No, you have control over things you are saying. Because the question is that if they say that, those things to you, how will you feel? So before you talk, you think. Before you talk. Because if the way God have I've done it. Your soul is arranged. Your mind, your will, your emotion. Your mind, your will, your emotion. Your mind, your will, your emotion. So if, if it is arranged, your mind, your will, your, meaning the controller of the soul is your mind. What is your mind? Your mind is your thinking and reasoning faculty. It's your educated faculty. Now, 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 <clears throat> before action is carried out, your mind weighs it. Before speech comes out of your system, your mind evaluates it. Now, if there is a rearrangement of your soul, like your emotion, women that are emotional, people that are emotional, that want to do, when they are, when they are hot, they vent their anger. They vent, they, it, it's just like uh, a, a serpent. The venom that comes out of serpent is, is, is a sticky substance that is produced out of bitterness and pain. Out of bitterness. When it's bitter, it produces it and pushes it out. 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 So you need to learn. Look at what Isaiah 50. Isaiah 50 verse 4. Look at what, what he said. Isaiah chapter 50 verse 4. The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season to him who is weary. He awakens my ear morning by morning. He awakens my ear to hear as the learned. So you can't speak as the learned until you hear as the learned. So there are ways the learned they speak. So your ear must hear. You must know how to speak a word to him that is weary. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. 
<clears throat> Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29, he said, Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. For what is good for necessary edification that it may impact grace to the hearer. So you learn to speak graceful words. These are scriptures you read daily. Learn to speak graceful words. Words filled with grace. Words filled with impact. Words filled with what? Excitement and empathy. Colossians chapter 4, verse 6. Colossians chapter 4, verse 6. Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought, ought to speak to each other. Let, so, let your word be seasoned. So, so you need to come into that actual realization, actual understanding. Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. Look at it. Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. He said, brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself least, you also be what? Tempted. Be one another's body and so fulfill the law of Christ. So, so, you have to get that understanding. Remember, in our discourse, I said that we have the spirit, you have your mind, you have your what? Your mouth. Your spirit, your mouth, uh, your mind, and your mouth. So there's a relationship between your mouth and your mind. So your mouth cannot say anything without the, 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 the it coming out of what? Out of your mind. That's why Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The Lord will grant us intelligence in the name of Jesus Christ. Pastor, I appreciate you. You are doing a great job. God Almighty bless you. Bless you real good for us in the name of Jesus Christ. Okwe from Abuja. Pastor, God bless you for the revelation. God bless you for the teaching. We appreciate you. Heaven will reward you, blah, 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 blah. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Pastor, I want to celebrate you. What an awesome teaching. How you have been doing this great and wonderful thing. Father, Father, a pastor, Father, God will bless you, your family, and the work of your hand in the name of Jesus Christ. Ah, these are just praises, praises to the glory of God. Yes, pastor, you answered my question. The Lord Almighty will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. The pa pastor, you answered my, my, my innermost thought. Thank God, God, thank you, sir. God bless you and bless your family in the name of Jesus Christ. This is in Kechi from Onicha. Pastor, I want to appreciate you. The way you interpret and explain scripture is alarming. How can I become this intelligent? Depend on the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit will grant you intelligence, open your eyes to see things you were not seeing, and spend quality time reading, learning, and researching. The primary thing is the Holy Spirit. It is the Lord Almighty that reveals things. People, I read their materials. They are privileged to be around me. They will also take note because Holy Spirit expands what I read beyond what I have seen. The Lord Almighty will grant you intelligence in the name of Jesus Christ. Acolis. God bless every word. Acolis, Acolis. Pastor, in fact, what you taught this morning is what my wife and myself were arguing about just some, some few minutes ago. And the Lord spoke it through you. Pastor, thank you very much. God bless you. I appreciate. Yes, another person is saying, Pastor, I am calling from Ghana. You have been awesome. You have been wonderful. God Almighty bless you to the glory of God. Wow, wow. Accolades, accolades, praises, praises, praises. Wow, wow. Oh, sorry, I've deleted the text message. Oh, sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Pastor, this is awesome. How can we get your materials? How can we get all these packs? Uh, yes, my number is on your screen right now. My number for the test and the one for the WhatsApp group, be part of that group and my email address. Uh, let's discuss on those platforms. And as you do, the Lord Almighty will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, those of you that are from Ghana or the West Coast or every other part, be part of the WhatsApp group so we can communicate and interact on that section. 
Uh, there are things I'll be doing there. I will not expose you because uh, I don't want you to rush there because of it. Want to surprise people that come around. There are some tips. There are some informations. As the Spirit of God guides and leads me, we are going to have those discussions. And as you do, the Lord Almighty will bless you all in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, Pastor, we just want to appreciate you. We want to celebrate you for what you are doing. God Almighty bless you. To see from Lagos. Uh, Pastor, I want to just rejoice for the thing that you are doing. God Almighty move you to the next level. Where well, can you day from me, Badon? Pastor, you are doing well. Doing well comes up for you. More grace and more speed in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, thank you very much. Amen. Amen. Yes, Pastor. How can I really, really, really cultivate my spiritual mind? Are you serious? <laughs> yes, we, we, how you cultivate your spiritual mind is what we have been trying to say since uh, 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 the first episode of this new series that, that you use your um, tongue to plant the word of God in the soil of your life, which is your mind, as you begin to place the word of God on auto-repeat, auto-repeat. The first time you speak to yourself is not the first time you hear yourself. It's it, it is, it is when it has resonated inside of you. That is when the seed has been planted and when it's growing. Let me say it again. The first time you say a word is not when you remember, when you recall. When you start recalling some things you say or remembering some things you say, it is when it is rooted and grounded inside of you. It is rooted and grounded. There are times you say some things, you read some things, you will not remember. Not remembering does not mean that there's nothing. No, you know that you have had something like that before, but it's still, it's still, it's still not clear. You go back to your note. Remember, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. In fact, read that 1 Corinthians chapter 3 from, from verse 5 downward. Read it downward. You will understand better what, what we are talking about. Because 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6 says, I, Paul, planted, Apollos watered, God brought in place. Apollos was a great teacher of the word of God. Paul, anytime Paul teaches the first thing, Apollos repeats what Paul is teaching, God brings increase because repetition is watering. Repetition is watering. Repe Even in confession, there are confessions you place on auto repeat. You are dislodging something, you are planting something. You are dislodging something, you are planting something. So as you plant and you start praying, repeating it, that's, it start growing. Sun will come and try you for that. That is trial and tribulation, which is sun. If you study Mark chapter 4, the parable of the sower, they said temptation and tribulation came for the word seed. It's the word, not you. It's the word. If they want to remove the seed. Yes, 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 yes. We have come to the end of this discourse. Let's continue our discourse on that our platform. My, my, my phone number is on your screen now. My email address and the WhatsApp number is on, on your screen now. Just copy it. Let's move this discussion to that place. And as you come, the Lord Almighty will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. I say God bless everyone that have been part of this select telecast, the engineering crew, the, the cameraman uh, uh, crew, uh, uh, people like the MCR, VCR, the Lord Almighty bless them, my producer, and you wonderful viewers all over the globe. Remain blessed, remain beautiful. Till I come your way next time, my name is Sebastian. When he's signing off for stepping out, remain blissful, remain blessed.